Hello, my brothers. Hello, my sisters. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give the thanks right now, to always give the praise right now, and to always give the glory. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy, so worthy to be praised. Each and every day, as he continues to wake you up, my brothers and sisters, the first thing that you should have done today is got on your knees to say, thank you, Jesus. To praise him, to glorify him. Because a lot of people today, my brothers and sisters, didn't even make it today. A lot of people didn't even have the opportunity today. But you did. You did. He is telling you that he's not done with you yet. He is telling you that he's not finished with you yet. That he had everything in the palm of his hand. That everything is going to be all right. Your job is, my brothers and sisters, is continue to trust him and believe him and keep the faith. Even though you don't know. Even though you don't see anything. Even though the situation and the circumstances still looking the same. Keep the faith. I don't care what nobody think or say about you. Keep the faith. I don't care how many people is laughing behind your back. You keep your faith. Don't lose your integrity for no one. You got to remember, you had a purpose before anyone had an opinion about you. You had a purpose way before anyone that has a negative opinion about you. That's what all about keeping the faith means. That's why praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, hallelujah, he is still on the throne. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. And he is still watching over every last one of us. Praise is what I do. I don't care if I don't have nobody in my life. As long as I have Jesus, as long as he bless me with my health and my strength, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to glorify him. I'm going to seek him. I'm going to magnify his holy name to the highest high. Even if I got to do it all by myself. Because God has been so good to me. And he is my everything. He is my rock, my refuge, my healer, my provider, my protector, my Lord and Savior. He is my everything. Nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. Come before him. He will always be number one in my life. And will stay right there. No ifs and but about it. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. And the Father God is coming before you peacefully and humbly right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. I thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today that's going to keep us fully satisfied. Father God, there's no place that I'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but in your house, in your sanctuary, Father God. Glorify your name, magnify your name, exalt your holy name. Oh, Father God, this is your day, the day that you have made. And I'm so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Father God, your words and your promises, it moves mountains. And I believe today, Father God, your word and your message, message today is going to move some mountains today. It's going to help someone today. You're going to talk to somebody's heart today. Oh, God, we just lift you up right now, Father God, just to give you thanks, praise, and glory in your house today, Father God. Father God, this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation. The house cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Father God, we just glorify you, Father God, for who you are, what you're done, what you're about to do in our life right now today. Father God, you know exactly what every last one of your sons, your daughters, even myself, what we are going through right now. 
And Father God, we might be going through a difficult time right now. We might be going through a rough patch right now. But Father God, there's nothing going to stop us from seeking you and glorifying you, Jesus. And always putting you first place. Because Father God, you are bigger than every anything that we're going through. You are stronger than every anything that we are facing or even can imagine, Father God. You are God. You are everything. And Father God, we just cast everything to you today, Father God, on a silver platter, God, because your word tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, to cast everything to you because no one cares for us like you do, Jesus. And Father God, we know that, God, so here it is. We put everything, everything on a silver platter to you. Allow your angels to move to this place. Allow your presence to move to this place. Allow your love to move through this place, Father God. Touch your righteous right hand on your sons and your daughters right now, even myself, Father God. Lift us up, Father God. You know every part of our body is what we are hurting at, Father God. Place your healing touch on your sons and your daughters, even myself right now, Father God. Oh God, allow your spirit to move through this place right now. Heavenly Father God, you have an open invitation. You're inviting right now today on your YouTube channel today, on your platform right now today. You have an open invitation. You're invited right now today into my brother's homes, into my brother's life, to my sister's homes, into my sister's life. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now on Jesus' YouTube channel right now today, on this platform. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation. You're invited into my brother's homes, into my brother's life, to my sister's homes, into my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place. I'm asking you to touch like you never touched before. I'm asking you to move like you never moved before. And allow allow every listener, every viewer, they go try to they go try to pass this YouTube channel. Allow them to catch the Holy Ghost fire right then and there. Let them catch the the anointing of your words, your anointing of your powerful messages and your promises, God. Oh, God, we just give you thanks right now in your place. We just magnify your name right now today in your place. And, Father God, we want to come together tonight. We just want to say thank you. We love you, Jesus. We trust you, Jesus. No matter what, we're going to continue to pour our heart out to you each and every day, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Just like praise is an everyday thing. Praying is an everyday thing. Repentance is also an everyday thing. Why? We all make mistakes each and every day. We all drop the ball each and every day. We all fall short of God's grace and mercy each and every day. Every last one of us do. There's not one person on this planet called Earth can say that we are perfect. Because we're not. It don't matter how big the sin is, how small the sin is. Sin is sin. It could be something that we watch. It could be something that we was listening to. It could be something that we done. Our job is to repent and ask God for forgiveness. So he can't forgive us. There's no need to try to hide it. There's no need to try to sugarcoat it. Because he's already aware of everything that took place today. He saw everything and he heard everything. So if you can't keep it real, be honest with Jesus. You can't keep it real and be honest with nobody. I'm just going to tell the truth and say how it is. So I need my keep it real brothers and I need my keep it real sisters to join me in repentance today. If that's okay. Heavenly Father God, I boldly ask of you to please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers. For every anything, Jesus, that be done wrong in the sight of your eyes today. Father God, please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart that was not part of, of you. Father God, please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us, Jesus. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood right now today, Jesus. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Jesus. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate 
Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. You didn't have to do it, but you did anyway. So, Father God, I want to say thank you. And before I get started, there's something that's always in my spirit about you, Jesus. It's something that always stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips each and every day about you, Jesus. And it's something I've got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify, shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart at you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise and I worship and I glorify your holy name the way I do, Jesus. That's why I brag, that's why I boast about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. 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 Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now that you can't thank him enough. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about today, my brothers and sisters, that a lot of y'all guys, you had a purpose way before anyone had an opinion about you. You had a purpose way before anyone had or has an opinion about you. And the reason why they have an opinion about you is because they know that you have a purpose. Nobody has an opinion about nobody if they don't see the greater good inside that young man or inside that young lady. Nobody has an opinion about someone if they, didn't, they don't see greatness inside that young man or that young lady. No one has an opinion about someone and they didn't know that you're going to be the next one up in line for the for the breakthrough, for the blessing. No one has an opinion about no one and they didn't know that you had a purpose in the first place. No one. And I know you got a lot of haters right now saying this and saying that. I know you have a lot of naysayers saying this and saying that. I know that you have a lot of people left behind your back, pretending to be your friend, pretending, pretending to really like you, but the whole time they hating on you, pretending to love you, but the whole time they jealous of you. I know that. But your job, my sisters, your job, my brothers, is to continue to focus on your purpose. No matter what they are doing behind your back, our Heavenly Father God will always have the last say so and he will always have the last laugh no matter what it looked like. And I know it's making you feel uncomfortable but you cannot focus on what the haters are saying. You cannot focus on what the naysayers are saying because if you focus on that, you're going to be in the same predicament with the rest of the chickens. Back on level ground. You're going to have to be the eagle. You're going to have to soar above the hate, above the naysayers, above what they talking behind your back. You cannot focus on that. You have a mission. You have a task. You have a journey that you are on, that you have to, it have to continue to go on no matter what. Your purpose continues, and it has to continue to go on. Despite what's going on behind your back, 
you was called. You was called for a purpose. When God spoke something inside of you, he knew exactly when it's going to take place, how it's going to take place, and how it's going to finish. He would never call you. He would never chose you. He would never consider you. He would never put you in that predicament if he didn't know the outcome, my brothers my sisters. He knew what was going to happen before you even got started. He already knew it. He knew people was going to walk out of your life before you did. He knew people was going to talk behind your back before you did. He knew it was going to be some fake people who you thought was friendly, who you thought was loyal. He knew that too. So there's no surprise to him. It ain't no shock to Jesus. It might be a surprise and it might be a shock to you, but you can't focus on that because you have a purpose. And whenever you have a purpose, your number one objective is is continue to focus on the purpose. Focus on the dream. Focus on the goal. Focus on the journey. Focus what's ahead of you. Not what's behind. Because if anybody can talk behind your back, that's where they belong at. Behind your back. If anyone can laugh behind your back, that's where they belong at. Laughing behind your back. If anyone can point fingers behind your back, that's where they belong at. Behind your back. Because I'm going to tell you, my brothers, I'm going to tell you, my sisters, there will come a time when the rain is going to come. Your job is, my brothers and sisters, let the rain do the talking for you. Let the rain do the talking for you. Because the more that you continue to put on, the more that you continue to perform, the more that you continue to show up, you know what's happening? It's building rain. You're building rain. And at, and at God's time, not my time, not your time, but on God's time, he will, he will deliver the rain. Because he is the, he is the father of the heavens and the earth. So he in control of the whole show. He in control of this whole situation, what's going on right now. And see, this particular guy in this, in this Bible that we're going to read on, he got that same problem. Noah had that same problem. People laughed at Noah each and every day because he was building the ark. They laughed at him. They picked at him. They ridiculed him each and every day. Did not, did not know that God was already up, was up to something. They didn't know how God was going to deliver the rain. Noah himself they didn't even know. But Noah kept his eyes focused on his purpose. He was not worried about what the haters were saying. He was not worried about what the naysayers were saying. He was not worried about how people was laughing behind his back because of where they stayed at. He was not even focused on how people was pointing behind his back because in his mind, that's where they stayed at, behind his back. Noah had a purpose. His purpose was his purpose was to continue to finish building the ark. He didn't care what nobody thought. He didn't care what nobody had to say because Noah knew he had a purpose way before anyone had an opinion about him. And Noah knew that God would not put him in no predicament if there was no outcome. There was no way out of it. So Noah had enough faith not on himself, but he had enough faith in Jesus. Knowing that Jesus, our Lord and Savior Christ, will come through and he knew that Jesus will deliver the rain. But he didn't know how long it was going to be. But Noah was not focused on the time. He was focused on the purpose. He was focused on the mission. He was focused on the task. He was focused what God has called and chosen put in his heart to do, that was Noah was focused on. The point I'm making to you right now today, my brothers and sisters, you got to be focused more than ever. You got to be focused on what God has called you to do, 
chose you to do and considered you to do. Don't worry about what other people are thinking or saying about you. Let them talk. Because if you weren't doing anything, nobody be talking now, would you? If you was not doing the right thing, nobody be worried about laughing at you, now would it? If you was not making no progress, you ain't got worried about somebody saying this and saying that. The only saying it is because they know and what they see inside of you. That's why they talking. That's why they hating. That's why they laughing. That's why they pointing fingers behind your back. It's because they see the greater in you. Nobody talks about nobody if nothing's going if nothing's going to happen in that person's life. Nobody does that. You continue to focus. You continue to focus on what God called and chose and considered you to do, no matter what. Let's get into this word. Turn our Bible to Genesis 7. And we're going to read verses 5 through 7. Genesis chapter 7 and we're going to read verses 5 through 7 and if you have your Bibles open let the church say amen amen hallelujah and Noah did all that that the Lord commanded him Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on the earth and Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds and of all creatures that move along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark as God has commanded Noah. And after the seven days, the flood waters came on the earth. So did you see? Let the haters talk. Let the naysayers say what they're going to say. But you, my brothers, you, my sisters, let the rain do the talking for you. Because it will come a time, it will be rain. The rain going to come. It's like it came for Noah. And everybody that laughed at Noah, everybody that picked at Noah, once God sealed that door, that was it. And when the rain came, the same people that laughed, the same people that picked, the same people that ridiculed was begging and pleading for their life to get on their arm. The point I'm making to you, my brothers and my sisters, they're going to do the same thing to you. Get ready. Your rain is about to come. This is your season for the rain to come. This is your season that the flood waters will come. Enter into your ark, my sisters. Enter into your ark, my brothers. Because God will deliver the rain. You continue to stay focused on your purpose and let God handle the rest. And you know this word is for you. And you know God is talking to you. Give Jesus some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord right now today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, but I was praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is witness.alt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always continue to pour your heart out to Jesus. Always continue to trust him. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter. If you ever seen their face, prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep out in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving minutes LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.